as Meghan Markle and her husband Prince Harry had moved into Frogmore Cottage on the Windsor Estate in April 2019. After months of extensive renovation, the 10-bedroom house was given to the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex as a wedding gift from Queen Elizabeth II. Nestled on the Frogmore Estate in the home park, the historic home sits in the shadow of the late monarch's primary residence, Windsor Castle. However, while the Queen's gift of Frogmore Cottage has been described as a big deal, the Sussexes reportedly requested a different property for their martial home. As the castle has been owned by the royal family for nearly a thousand years and has been home to some senior royals, including the Queen and Prince Philip. As the estate is made up of more than just the castle itself and contains several properties, which the Queen had previously gifted to family members. In her book, The New Royals, royal expert Katie Nicole had said that the late Lady Elizabeth Anson, who had died in 2020, said that the Queen described the Windsor home as a big deal and had shared her hopes that Harry and Meghan would respect her generosity. However, before they were granted Frogmore, a number of homes in the Windsor were reportedly put forward as possible residents for the couple, one of which was Adelaide Cottage, which is now the home of the Prince and Princess of Wales and their children. As Prince William and Kate had moved from London to the four-bedroom home in Windsor at the end of the summer, with their three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. But why did Meghan Markle want to live in Windsor Castle? And because Princess Henry had illusions of grandeur, and they didn't poor working girls who got to marry their Prince Charming all get to live in a fairy tale castle. I mean, look at Cinderella and Belle. So Meghan had believed that she deserved the same, so she had thought about it and came up with a plan. As the first house was expected, too quiet, too far from the action. The next house was too small and too close to the nasty neighbors. As the answer was simple, Queenie had the big old smelly castle all to herself, so why not turn a chunk of it over to her favorite grandson? Obviously, after it had been thoroughly modernized to Princess Henry's estate, Meghan had dreamed of sending out beautifully written invites to all the celebrity friends, asking them to afternoon tea at her new home in Windsor Castle. However, Grandma was Willie Old Bird, and nowhere near and senile as Meghan had thought. She had sussed out Meghan's plan. And with a wave of her magic wand, Queenie had granted Meghan all her wishes, ensuring that she got all she deserved. A home in Windsor and privacy, no nasty neighbours, and seclusion, but still only a short drive or a helicopter ride from the bright lights of the big city. In short, she had loaned them Frogmore Cottage. As moreover, there's a rumour that Harry had asked if they could use one of the vacant staff apartments in Windsor Castle, but it seems unlikely that he would or the Queen or Charles would have agreed to their grandson or son living in such a basic accommodation as not good for the royal image. For those who don't know or don't bother to research, Windsor Castle wasn't built to be one huge living area, as the Queen has her own living quarters, as there's also homes to roughly 150 other people. The castle is split up due to staff apartments, guest rooms, work areas, and including office spaces, storage, and state rooms that are open to the public when not used for state and ceremonial events. As Harry and Meghan are both well acquainted with the layout, so that would know better than the person who had made up the story that there is no luxury wing of the castle sitting empty, awaiting an occupant.